again. Um, I'm just about to get started on a little project that's going to reorganize us for our homeschool season in the fall. Because we homeschool throughout the summer, this little cabinet behind me has been well used and it's gotten a little disorganized. As my kids get older, they have different needs, and so I'm constantly reassessing what needs to change and what we need to do different. And so um, I am currently homeschooling a 10 year old, an eight year old, and a six year old, and then we have a toddler who's two. And so that makes things interesting. But we don't have a fancy homeschool room. I have a separate, we call it the library, space where I keep curriculum and extra office supplies and craft supplies. But the majority of our schooling is done right here at our dining room table to the left of me. And so that white cabinet you see behind me is where I keep all of our homeschooling supplies. And because it's used a lot by the kids, I have to go through that all the time to make sure that it functions for us well. And before I do that, I thought that I would share with you some tips if you are also a homesteader and a homeschooler, because homeschooling in of itself is its own topic and many people homeschool. Just because you homeschool doesn't mean you're a homesteader, but we do homestead and we also homeschool. And so that does present itself with different challenges and opportunities. And so I wanted to talk a little bit about balancing um, homeschooling on the homestead and what we do through the various seasons. Well, if this is your first time here, my name is Brianna and my husband Gray and I like to learn, practice, and teach our children traditional skills. So we've been homeschooling since 2016 and when my oldest son was about to go to preschool I started doing preschool at home with him and because we were already homesteading before we started homeschooling I noticed it wasn't necessarily difficult to balance in the beginning because preschool is extremely easy to teach if you will um, but as my children progressed and got older and were incorporating more subjects there has been some things that I needed to take into consideration to be able to do both. I have eight tips for you that are going to help you to focus on your homeschooling while homesteading. The first one is during busy seasons on the homestead, not all year, but during the busy seasons, harvest time, planting time, typically in the fall and the spring, focus on the core subjects. So for us, we never want to just go months without learning anything. But during those really busy times, we are not doing the elective material in the same way. So we focus on the core subjects like reading, writing, math, history, and science. We just focus on those subjects. And then when it's a little bit slower, we do more in the way of poetry projects, language, and things like that. And so that's the first tip. The second tip is to focus early on helping your child read. Now this is easier said than done because different children have different reading challenges and um, methods, but regardless, once your child is reading, they start to read to learn, which frees up some of your time and is a huge milestone that you can check off. So we always focus on pre-reading and reading early and we can then offer them the materials to learn some things themselves and put that into practice. Tip number two is to, is goes along with the last one and that is to encourage independence. I usually will sit down when it's lesson time for each of my kids and then when it comes to their independent work I'm available to help them. They do it at the pace that they want to get it done. So that means that if it takes them all day because there might be some procrastination I want them to learn some time management skills. I'm not going to be forcing them to do it in any time requirement except that it needs to be done by the end of the day. Now this will encourage them some independence and also to teach them time management. The next one is to model that love of learning. We tell our children that we're learning all the time. In fact, we don't even call um, our homeschool or school work. We don't call it school. We call it paperwork because both my husband and I are self-employed and we each have paperwork that goes along with our jobs. And so we're learning all the time when we're learning a new skill or we're going out in the world and experiencing new things. But paperwork is something that is unavoidable and for us and it's also unavoidable for our kids and so framing it in that way that we're going to sit down and do paperwork but that we love learning all the time
time. We're always learning new hobbies and skills. It's really beneficial for them for their lifelong learning journey. Um, the next thing I mentioned a little bit in the beginning, and that is to throw out the public school schedule, okay? So it, it's really easy to kind of, especially if your children have friends that are in a public or a private school that have a similar schedule, um, when you're homesteading, you have to think how when you're going to take your breaks in a different way. So we don't break through the summer because summer is a great opportunity for, for us to sit down at the table and get a lot of paperwork in while it's hot outside and we're not outside as much. But during those cool fall days and good weather days, we have to prioritize when we need the time and have our children alongside us and learning in a hands-on way on the homestead and when they're sitting and doing paperwork. We're not going to sit and do paperwork when there is fruit rotting on the vine. And so um, that might look like we're doing more schoolwork around Christmas or summer. You can also think about throwing out the school system schedule in how you organize your day. So sometimes our schooling happens right before bed when we are reading a really good book and we're discussing it or we're at breakfast time or however. Um, so just throw out that schedule. Don't pay attention to it. Be diligent and map it out for how it works in your family as long as you're getting those hours in for your children to have for learning. And the next one is to throw out the school classroom, right? We school at our dining room. We actually have room that we could make a classroom in that um, office space, but it's not super practical for us to have um, desks and have it set up in that way because I'm trying to teach my children to have conversation in our learning, to sit on a chair and read a good book, and to incorporate it into our everyday life. So I love that I can be doing dishes while talking about a passage we just read. Um, and so that's something to consider. Um, we have two more points. The next thing is teach your children how they learn best. And this takes a little bit of trial and error. I have four children and they do learn differently between them. And so I've had to adjust curriculums in order to serve a specific child for what they need for that specific subject. Um, the beauty of this is that it is customizable and you know your child the best. No teacher is going to know your child like you know them. If you're paying attention and you're any, what, uh, any bit of a diligent parent, um, teach them the way they personally learn best. And the last point is to read aloud every day. If you've never read the Read Aloud Revival, I highly, highly recommend it. I will leave it linked down in the description box below, along with the corresponding blog post for this video. It is one of my favorite part, no, it is, I'll say one of my favorite parts of homeschooling is reading aloud to my children. We have laughed, we have cried, we have ha had so many good discussions opened up just by reading good books. And so I encourage you to um, look at the book list in the Read Aloud Revival and start there and just read to your children um, every night. I hope that these tips were helpful. If you are a homesteader and a homeschooler, I'm going to get started on my little project right behind me and get reorganized for the upcoming season in our homeschool on the homestead. I hope that this was helpful. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below and I will see you next time.